We're good. We're rolling. Yep. All right. Cool, man. We got a legend in the building today, my boy Kiefer what Sykes. Up, what up? Yes, sir. Really excited Appreciate to you. have you over here, bro. Thanks for pulling up. Um, I've been watching you. I know I just told you off camera, but I've been watching you hoop, uh, being a small guard myself, uh, growing up probably since ninth, tenth grade, man. Just trying to learn the footwork, you know, everything you've been doing at the next level. So uh, been watching you for a minute, bro. Man, I appreciate it. Obviously, you know, been watching you, man. What you doing is inspiring. Yes, sir. Um, man, just how you trailblazing for the game. Just you know the energy that you bring, uh, the freshness that you bring. Yes, sir. You know, everybody love it, man. Appreciate it's definitely that, dope bro. for the yeah. youth. They picking it up. My son picking it up. I want a jelly fan. want to do the yeah. layers. want to do the trick shots, man. Yeah. You're one of a kind. So I'm just happy to be here as well, brother. Yeah, appreciate yes, you, bro. So we just we just watched Ooh. you play a game, literally. Yeah. Literally. And five minutes ago. Five minutes ago. <laughs> we're in the arena right now. So that was yeah. super dope. I've never seen you play in person. Yeah. So, and I, and I know how the, the summer league is, is like, you know, a lot of people don't realize about the NBA Summer League and a lot of this stuff is, like, a lot of politics goes into it. Yeah. You know, like, playing time, like, all that shit. You got to be ready to go. It's, it's yeah. super, right? You're playing for a yeah, spot. So, yeah, 100%. And uh, just the professionalism of mm -hmm. everything, you know. Um, you know, this is my fifth time doing Summer League, actually. Okay. So I'm probably one of the – I'm definitely probably the one of the oldest here and probably one of the most experienced in, in a, a number of trials that I've had here. And uh, – like you said, man, my journey has been cool. And uh, to be in Detroit, you know, somewhere, some team in the Midwest, yep. a lot of young guys, uh, I'm able to help them. And, you know, like you said, you got to see me play today. It was cool. You know, we was down 10, 12 when I got in the game. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, made some big plays, got a steal, hit a three, cut it to three. Boom. And, uh, you know, we was down 15, and we ended up coming back and winning that game. So, um, you know, like you said, with NBA, it's a lot of different things you could do. Yeah. Uh, you know, people see all these people doing free agency, making this big money, and they're like, how they making this money? Or yeah. how was this player able to, you know, make this much per year, you yeah. know? But it's like, you know, the professionalism and just in their toolkit, the different things they bring, you know, leadership, energy, um, yeah. you know, being able to bring a spark and bring the guys back. You know, it could be different players that's much more talented at certain things, but – um, if you're able to find your niche, man, you could, you know, get a groove here. So I've just been blessed. 100%. Yeah. And w when you came in, it was like a spark just happened. Mm -hmm. Like, you mm -hmm. could really talk about professionalism. You could you could see how calm you were. Like, you've been in this situation before, mm -hmm. and your energy fed off of your team. So that was that was dope to watch because, like, I know basketball, and I, I see little things like that, the body language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you came in as, like, and it's important because, yeah. like, a lot of players can go out there and get a bucket, but, like, you have to find the person that's going to, like, try the hardest. Like, mm -hmm. you need that hustle player out there. That's what they're looking for in yeah, summer league. Yeah, play your role. Yeah. You got to yeah. play your role, right? Yeah, man, like you was, like we were saying, uh, you know, a game like that, down 15, a close yep. game, uh, it feels better to walk away with a win mm -hmm. or feel real bad walking away with a close loss. So, um, you know, it's, all, it's just the energy, man. That's just been my life, my journey, just having good energy. Yeah. Um, just putting good energy and positivity into the game. You know, it's something that I was doing the first quarter, the second quarter, you know, in the timeout, saying good things. Um, you know, when I get out there saying good things, leading with, you know, guys that I just met or, yeah. you know, last game I didn't play. So, you know, yeah. I'm trying to figure it out the first half, missed two shots, but I knew that was going to warm me up to hit that big three. So it's yeah. like, you know, that's a testament of, you know, yeah. putting in the work. And, uh, you know, when nobody sees it or doing the little things. And being and ready like, when the time comes. Yeah, and then you just show up in a big stage. And, you know, to get a big win like that is going to, like you said, it's definitely going to turn some heads and get some attention. So that was cool. 100%. It feels real good. So you said, um, you know, this is like your fifth year playing Summer League. Yeah. How – explain <laughs> your journey from where you started all the way until now. Like, I've, I've been watching you play since UW-Green Bay. So, like, explain that journey until now. Yeah, so, man, my journey has been really, really cool. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, I'm just grateful to even be here. Yeah. You know, I'm grateful to be able to play five times in Summer League, you know, because some people could look at it like, oh, man, he's playing so many times. He's trying this, trying this. But I know it's players that are playing abroad or players that, you know, play one-year pro and never even had an NBA opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Never even had overseas opportunities. So, um, yeah, my journey just started, man. It's crazy. I was – um. One of the youngest high school players, I was 13 as a freshman. Wow. So that Whoa. mean when I was in college, you know, I played half the season at 17 years old. I was the youngest freshman in the did country. You, you skip a grade? Yeah, I did. Okay. I skipped a grade. Um, so I was the youngest freshman in the country in college. Um, so, you know, I, I kind of skipped over high school. I'm from Chicago, you know, prestigious yep. place, a lot of athletes, a lot of good players. Me mm -hmm. being undersized, underrated, it's hard to find 
find yourself. But, you know, I went to John Marshall with Patrick Beverly, um, yep. Alfonso McKinney, yep. um, a powerhouse school, you know, on Hoop Dreams, uh, mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, we was able to go down to the state tournament. So I was able to get recruited, you know, by one school, um, Wisconsin Green Bay. And yep. you said your brother went there. And, you know, it's crazy because when I committed, people don't even know. They, like, I just used to tell them Wisconsin. You yeah. know, because they like, Wisconsin Green Bay? Like, where is that? What school is that? Is that a basketball school? Yeah, but like, you heard of the Green Bay Packers or Yeah, what? that's yeah. what they yeah. say. So, yeah. you know, and then being from Chicago with the Bears. But, um, yeah, so, man, I went up there for four years, and um, it changed my life. Um, you know, going to a mid-major. I was able to, you know, be a big fish in a sense in a small, you know, a small pond. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, took that school from, you know, thousand people at the games to our stadium being sold out by our juniors. That's and, so dope, and senior bro. Year, you know, us getting ESPN games, us being one of the top mid-majors in the country. And uh, we was able to pump out three NBA pros. Like I said, uh, you know, myself, yep. Alfonso McKinney, uh, a big guy, Alec Brown. We was able to pump out a, a, a number of other overseas professionals, just professional basketball players from there. So, um, yeah, we went up there and created a culture, man, and, um, you know, it felt good doing it. And then from there, um, I turned pro. So I went to the NBA Combine, which was cool. You know, yeah. most people, they only, they only picked 60 players, but I was one of the 60 yeah. to get in that. Um, that was a real cool experience and started my journey. So I went undrafted but got picked up by Cleveland my first year right after the draft. Okay. Did summer league with them. Right after that, the Spurs called me for training camp. Did the training camp with the Spurs. Then um, after that, it was time to make me some money. I had just had my second kid. Yep. I had my first kid in high yeah. school. So, you know, doing all this as a teenage parent and, you know, amongst all obstacles. But, you know, I went to South Korea. Then I went to Turkey. Then I went to Italy. Then wow. I went to China. Then I went back to Italy to Milan to play in the Euro League. And then I played in Greece for one month, and uh, I was like, you know what, I'm going to go to Australia. It was the COVID year. I went to Australia. Yeah. I saw LaMelo Ball, uh, Jay Sean Tate, um, a number of guys, uh, you know, go from there to the NBA. So I went there, and then, um, you know, I was like, all right, I'm going to go for this NBA thing. And uh, that same summer after, you know, COVID in Australia, I played in the TBT, yep. uh, the basketball tournament, million-dollar tournament. Yep. And uh, we ended up winning it. I hit the game winning shot. Yeah, oh, bro. A million dollars, man. That was cool. And Bro, you know, I totally forgot about that shit, crazy. actually. And yeah, been in, uh, oh my been, in, been in the NBA, around the NBA the last three years. Got picked up by Indiana. Uh, got with Detroit last year for camp. Got hurt. So played in the G League the whole year. You know, when I got back, we ended up going 17 to 16. We yep. started off 1 and 6. So once I got healthy, we got That's it rolling. Crazy. So now they gave me another opportunity here. And, uh, you know, trying to make their roster. Yeah, and you performed today, baby. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, I've been sir. performing all camp. Man. Uh, the two games that I played, we won. The game I didn't play, we lost. So I'm just trying to, you know, like I said, my journey has been cool because I'm yeah. grateful for it all. And I'm just continuing to so, chop. like, mentally, though, yeah. like, that is a lot of, like, traveling, moving. Moving. Like, I mean, you said you had a kid in high school. Yeah. You, you have how many kids now? Two. Two kids, yes, like, sir. moving them around at the same time. Like, yeah. bro, how does that, like, that's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. So, mm -hmm. uh and I appreciate you asking that because, like you say, yeah. the isolation of playing yeah. abroad, being there by myself, yeah, being on man. different time zones. Got to pick up this summer. Got to they make they give me a call. So now I got to go to Detroit. I got to go to Vegas. Been here for three weeks now. Yeah, well, it's the, the shit that people don't realize yeah. that you, like, a human being has to go through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you got to stay up mentally. Yeah, you know. Um, you know, going to places and my journey, you know. I went to all of these different places on purpose. You know, I could have went to Europe and just stayed and stayed and tried to grind it out slowly. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm good enough to go to the NBA. So if you all don't value this, I'm going to go here to mm -hmm. Australia. If you all don't value this, I'm going to go to China. You know, just pushing myself, testing myself. And yeah. I think the biggest thing of keeping myself up is, uh, you know, knowing where I come from, coming from Chicago. Yep. Um, you know, just like I say, being grateful. You know, I got friends that's in prison, people that died, and just, you know, people that, had a lot of talent and didn't max out. And, you know, me trying to push myself to my potential to leave a legacy. Yeah. Um, you know, also yoga is a big thing for me. Yoga, meditation, Hell just keeping yeah. my mind in the right space. Because, you know, like you said, it's difficult, you know, going out here and having to play 12 minutes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and having to bring a spark. I could have, like you said, instead of cheering guys on, I could have been like, man, thinking about my minute situation, you know, thinking, thinking about, focused on myself. Yeah, how mm -hmm. you can get the most points and look yeah. the best by yourself. You but, know you what know, I'm saying? But yeah, and then karma probably wouldn't have had me have the output that I had. Yeah, exactly. Me putting positivity, cheering those guys on, staying focused, 
you know, getting out of my own way, getting out of my own head, and yeah. being able to, you know, have a good output, man. I think that's what life is about, you know, just putting good energy yeah. and being positive. That's, that's what got bro, me here. That's what we're all about, bro. That's mm -hmm. crazy because we think the same way in terms of, like, the karma shit, like, the good energy. And you see, yeah. like, when you do, I mean, fir first, first person me, like, I've witnessed it myself. I'm sure you have, like. When you're just a good person for no reason, you do good things, mm -hmm. like, good stuff happens, bro. But, it like, you see a lot of people, like, I'm not sure if you got haters out there. And I'm sure, along, I'm sure along the Everyone way. Everyone does. 100%. I'm sure along the way you had haters. 100%. But what are those haters doing right now? Yeah, they just, they just watching, you know, hoping you hoping you fail. But, mm -hmm. you know, exactly. envious wanting to be in your position. Uh, and I I like to see right there. Even I just want to switch it back to positivity because I don't even like exactly. to yeah. dwell in it. But um, like you said about karma, man, just like you got the basketball over bullies, right? You know, not for mm -hmm. profit. You know, I have a for profit. Yep. You know, that's kind of how we met. Hundred percent. Paulie, you know, shout out to Paulie Duran. Yes, sir. But um, <clears throat> yeah, us and our, you know, philanthropy, just giving back, just creating opportunities. Like I said, the videos you post, the content. Yeah. That's all pushing out good energy to the world, and that's yeah. why you keep getting opportunities. You know, you here at the summer league at the top of the suite, you know, and one-on-one -on -one right here, getting this great experience and being 100%. able to put your platform on a level with the highest brands. And that's why I'm continuing to get opportunities as well. And yeah. everything, you know, being able to God bless me to stay healthy, stay whole. 100%. And just stay peaceful. 100%. Yeah, you bro. persevered through a lot. I, like, going from place to place like that just can't be easy at nah, all. Nah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was obstacles along the way. Yeah. You know, some teams I didn't get paid. Um, you know, Dang. some teams, you know, I didn't start, you know, in China. I ended up getting cut. Mm. You know, I was an all-star there, and they cut me just because our team wasn't winning. Dang. Um, you know, in South Korea, we ended up winning the championship, but they almost sent me home two times. Really? You know, because we were one of the top teams. We were one and two, but they just always thought the other team would beat us. So, you know, that drove me. Uh, you know, I lost my father mm. um, when I was in, in college. Wow. So, yeah, man, being peace, a teenage man. parent. So, you know, all of this stuff just, like, for me, it's just like, all right, this is my story. I got to keep just building, 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 keep yeah. writing. And uh, I don't know if you all know I have a documentary on Amazon. Power I was going to say you need a documentary. Yeah, so, I mean, if you all check that out. I'm about know, to go see, check that out tonight, bro. Yeah, you I see didn't that. even know that. Yeah, you see everything is, you know, my life is real, man. Just grinding from Chicago, being a little kid that nobody really noticed. Like I said, yeah. I wish my parents had me in the right grade. Yeah. I'm like, all right, I got to fight against that, too. <laughs> yeah. Play against older players all the time, but. Hey, that, it just that's, built me. that's what got you here, man. Yeah, this stuff I feel like it built me. You know, it that's, just built me. Yeah, that's what got you here. So pretty much before we wrap this up, I got one more question, man. What what advice, you know, would you give to somebody, a, a young kid trying to make it? Because you were once that same young kid, and you've done all that traveling, all the different, like, mentally, like, oh, my God, are they going to send me home? Mm -hmm. Am I going to get traded here? Am I going to have to go here? Like, what advice would you give to somebody who might be in that position that you were in? Yeah, uh, a couple things. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time alone. Yeah. You know, all of us in our life, right? Yeah. We're always going to spend a lot of our time alone. So you got to feed your mind with positivity because doubt going to creep in. Or just you just talking to yourself or just going through the journey day by day. Yeah. You may not get the credit or the check or the job until months later just because it, that's only that's the time it's going to come like yeah. i don't know when i'm gonna make a team to october but from now to then i could be sitting dwelling on it overthinking it or i could just be putting in the work and just being positive man reading feeding my mind positivity man putting yourself around positivity yeah you know just trying to you know just always keep yourself at the highest level just being the best version of yourself um so that's one thing um two have an irrational faith you know we live in a world where now it's just easy for everybody to like you say, envy each other, doubt yeah. each other, be negative, or yeah. project. Like, if you don't have something, they like, oh, you stand down. Or yeah. when you have something, they want to pull you down. You know, like I say, I'm sure you dealt with that with so much success yeah. you have. A lot, everybody's not happy about it. Hundred percent. You know, that could be family, that could be friends. Yeah. That could be the internet. Social media is a, a tornado nowadays. Um, yep. So man, just having that irrational faith, believing in yourself, that helped me a lot. Um, you know, I had agents and things like that where I had to you know, make moves, and I had went through four agents and just, you know, yeah. for different reasons. But when I believe something that I believe, I got to live with that and step out and yeah. make those moves and have that faith. Even if it's uncomfortable. Even if it's uncomfortable. Like, you know, 
firing someone is uncomfortable. I'm oh, a great yes. person. It's I don't want to do that. Hundred percent. But if my instincts and my gut is telling me like, man, I, I want to do this, otherwise I'm gonna live with regret. Yep. Regrets. You gotta, you know, take that initiative. So um, those two, and then it's good. I just said that the last thing is taking initiative. Mm -hmm. You know, even how we got this podcast. Like, hey, I'm gonna reach out to y'all. I'm gonna come check out y'all suite after this. I yep. met up with y'all other day, and yep. let's do it. Let's knock it out. If I see you, I'm gonna say something. If I see someone I admire, I'm gonna say something. If I, 100%. you know, hey, here's my card, or if they wanna invite me to something, you never know what it, uh, what rooms what, it gets you into. To, yeah. You know, I feel like I come from a. You know, it was eight of us in a two-bedroom, mm. and wow, I could have stayed man. in this box in my life of poverty. Yep. But, you know, I'm just continuing to ask questions, continue to be curious. If I reach this level, okay, how can I reach this level? Mm -hmm. They said I want to reach here. Okay, how can I reach the next level? You know, just taking the initiative, putting myself in different rooms and different spaces, and like you said, yeah. it's uncomfortable, but continuing to grow. And, uh, you know, those three things right there, uh, you know, put you on another level. Yeah. Wow, bro. You are – Really that was a great answer. Well spoken, <laughs> yeah, that, man. that was a Holy great answer. Holy cow, man. <laughs> Thank that you. Is, someone's going to get some motivation from watching this episode. Mm -hmm. 100%. Thank you, man. Well, hey, man, we got the legend, Kiefer Sykes. Thanks for pulling up, bro. He yes, did sir. not have to do this, and he did. Love so y'all, man. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. All love. Yes, sir. And good luck to you with everything you got going on, yeah. bro. Yes, good luck, sir. too, man. We're going to connect. And, yes, sir. Uh, especially Do on the philanthropic viral, work. viral videos. Yeah, yeah. I want to get right with that. Yes, sir. All right, my brother. All right. God bless y'all. Peace.